In this video, I'm going to give you a concise explanation, some examples, and hopefully the definitive word on why relying on Magna Carta and claiming common law jurisdiction or freeman of the land status and things like this simply isn't going to work. So welcome back, I'm the Black Belt Barrister, helping you to understand law. So please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos, and share this with someone who you think might be interested in it, or who disagrees with it, and you think they need putting in the right direction. So lots of people on social media are talking about Magna Carta and common law jurisdiction, and claiming that you can set yourself outside of the Acts of Parliament so that the laws don't apply to them. And obviously this isn't true and is not how it works. First of all, let me show you an educational resource which clearly sets out for you which elements of Magna Carta are still in force and which are not. The majority of them have been repealed. So first of all, here you can see the sections set out. The ones that are in green with a tick show you that these are still in force, and the ones that show repealed obviously are no longer in force. And out of all of these, you can see that section 1, section 9, section 29, and section 38 of Magna Carta are still operational and in force. In fact, you can still see the most up-to-date version of Magna Carta on legislation.gov.uk. And you can see, therefore, that only four of the original clauses of Magna Carta are still valid today. And of those, the most important one is now section 29, as you can see on screen here, which essentially means that no one is going to be imprisoned or outlawed or exiled without lawful judgment of his peers or the law of the land. Now this, as you might expect, has been tested a number of times in the court, but there are no known cases of this succeeding in any way, shape or form. So today I'm going to give you two examples of where such individuals found this out the hard way. So in the first story, an uninsured driver was jailed for trying to avoid punishment by claiming that he was a freeman of the land, and therefore the UK laws didn't apply to him. A 29-year-old man in May of 2015 was pulled over by traffic police in the West Midlands on Birmingham Road in Smethwick. He was seen driving a Vauxhall Astra by police officers, and having run a check, they realised that this car was actually insured to a woman, and not to him. When asked for his details, he said he was part of the Freeman of the Land movement, which prohibited him from talking to the officers, because that would mean that he would enter some kind of contract. And because he refused to cooperate the police, he was also charged with obstructing the police in the execution of their duty. He then refused to cooperate the magistrate's court when he appeared there on the 1st of October in Sandwell. He was removed from the court for being obstructive by the security staff, and in his absence, he was jailed for 14 days for contempt of court. The next example was very much more recent, from May 2021, and this was an application for judicial review, which was heard and dismissed at the Queen's Bench Division of the High Court. The brief factual background is that on the 6th of November 2018, a Mr Salmon, who was the claimant in this judicial review application, was convicted at the Magistrates' Court in Leeds of an offence under the Public Order Act. Essentially, which is using threatening, abusive or insulting words or behaviour with an intent to cause a person to believe that immediate unlawful violence would be used against them. In this case, the victims were Vicky Swannell and her partner, who lived next door. Mr Samuel was convicted in the Magistrates' Court, fined and ordered to pay costs and a victim surcharge. But he appealed against both sentence and conviction to Leeds Crown Court. Because if you're convicted in the Magistrates' Court, you have an automatic right of appeal to the Crown Court. This is by way of a rehearing at the Crown Court. Now, some of the notes from the hearing at the Crown Court make clear that the language that he was using was that he was claiming common law jurisdiction. The judge said he continued to inform the court that he claimed common law jurisdiction. He then called the judge fraudulent and refused to participate in the proceedings and was becoming disruptive and belligerent. These are the judge's comments. Even when the Crown Court's mental health practitioner was talking to this claimant, it's reported in this judgment that, I quote, he continued to say that he stood under common law, that he'd not understood what the judge was saying, repeatedly asking whether or not the judge was under a common law oath, and told the judge that he would sue him. After some further difficulties of getting the case heard at the Crown Court, it was ultimately heard in his absence and dismissed. In other words, the conviction stood. And thus, by making the application for judicial review, he wanted the High Court to review 
whether or not the things that the other court had done, such as hearing it in Hibbs' absence, were correct or not. And at paragraph 40 of this judgment, dismissing this application for judicial review, the judge said, during his submissions, the claimant made reference to the following contracts, reserving his common law rights, claiming common law jurisdiction, the fact that he did not consent to statute law, that his consent was required for the enforcement of statute law and that he could not be made to comply with it, Magna Carta, that a trust should be dismissed once a living man claims his status as a living man, to him being a live-born man, to canon law of 2057, to Andrew Salmon being a fictional corporate person and the Uniform Commercial Code. The judge said, although he did not describe himself as such, some of the claimant's submissions were reminiscent of the language used by members of the Freeman of the Land movement. The judge concluded at paragraph 42 of this judgment, which I will link below, it is therefore plain that the claimant has a number of misguided ideas about the law. So that there is no doubt about it, I should make clear that the magistrate's court had jurisdiction to try him for the public order offence he was charged with by virtue of the Magistrate's Court Act 1980 and other legislation and the district judge was properly appointed. The claimant's consent was not and is not required for statute law to apply to him. So for anyone watching that had any remaining doubt before this video, you've now heard the remarks of a High Court judge, Mr Justice Julian Knowles, and I do hope that this helps to clarify what the position is with this common law argument and Magna Carta argument. So I strongly urge you, if you are even tempted to rely on these things, these are just two examples of where they've been tried and failed, and at least in the first story, which is no doubt one of many, resulted in the person claiming it going to prison. So please share this with someone that might find it interesting, and as always, thanks for watching.